Welcome to the Confident Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Johnson. If you find yourself here, it may mean that you're looking for courage, clarity, or confidence in some part of your life. I interview experts in business and life each week and share strategies for success, motivation, and mindset. If you want to learn more about how I can help you grow your business as an extension of yourself or help transform you into a confident entrepreneur, check out my website at jenniferandjohnson.com. Now let's get started. Today, we welcome back into the studio, Tracy Duhaney, and she is with the Ambicelli Group, and she is the principal consultant and the founder of the Ambicelli Group. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So last time we talked about change and how change is constant. It's always happening. There's always going to be something around the curve, something around the bend. Yes. But the key import or the, the important thing here, and that is key, is to be prepared. Yes. No matter what it is. Yes. Yes. Be prepared by having a flexible, innovative culture and mindset, not just for the leaders, but for the entire organization. So with that, I want to talk about KPIs. People hear that word, especially coming from a small business mindset, right? Yes. People hear KPI and they're like, what? What is that? I don't know what that is. Yes. And then when they hear what it is, they're like, okay, well, I kind of understand it, but what does it have to do with me and my business? I know it's like that addition to the alphabet soup where it just, the letters just start flowing and you're like, KPI this, KPI this. Right. Huh? Uh Huh? (laughs) Exactly. So key performance indicators, those typical measurements that businesses use to track their performance. That's really all it is. You can have ones similar to client retention, client success, profit margin, customer satisfaction, internal employee satisfaction. The list goes on and on and on depending on the business, Mm -hmm. but also depending on what you're looking to track. My favorite KPI, which has gained recent popularity and I love it because it's about time, is just saying keep people informed. The new KPI. Okay. Because Oh, I get the you, play on the word yeah. now. Yes. Keep uh, people informed because that's the thing. We tend to just move things around as business leaders. We tend to make decisions and the employees are kind of just following. Right. And they have no idea why we're doing it. Mm-hmm. They're just following. And what that does is it creates friction and uncertainty. And in today's world where labor force mm-hmm. and employee retention are so low, Keeping people informed is one of those uh, one of those avenues to pursue to make sure that your employees know why we're doing what we're doing. I said they're also a part of the solution. Because people like being part of the solution, yes. right? They want a bigger reason. Yes. And they don't like feeling like a pawn on a chessboard. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the biggest things. One of the biggest analogies I like to use, I'm not a pawn. I may not be the king, the queen, or the knight. But I'm not a pawn. Right. I want to know mm-hmm. how we're playing the game, why we're playing the game that way. And now I'm not saying pull them into the board meeting every single time there's an executive decision that needs to be made, but help them understand why we, or why or how we got here. Mm-hmm. And that involves leadership. That involves the different tiers of your leadership, having, having them understand how we got there so that they can disseminate the information. Right. So you talked about, you know, there's all kinds of different KPIs, right? Mm-hmm. How many is too many? How many should you have? What are there? You know, I'm about with that. <laughs> if you go online, they'll tell you about five popular KPIs, but you can have as many as you need to, depending on what you're looking to track. If I'm looking to track customer satisfaction, that entire KPI can have its own sub KPIs. KPIs. I was wondering about that. Yes, because you can have their different measurements for customer success or customer satisfaction mm-hmm. coming from their return rate how much they spend, you know, what are their reviews saying, the the number of reviews, how long are their reviews, how frequent are their reviews. There are different things that come in to say, okay, I want to track customer satisfaction, Mm -hmm. but that's where you have to identify what am I going to use to track this and stick to it because people can get a little off the deep end with all the different measurement tactics that are out there. And when you start measuring everything, you're not measuring anything. Mm -hmm. I like that. And and we're going to talk a little bit about in in the next half, how we're going to be able to track them. But I loved how you use the play in the words, the KPI, keep people informed. I wish I could take credit for that, but I can't. (laughs) I just love it because it's, it's, I, communication is one of, and I know we're talking about KPIs, but this is all falling with it. But communication is one of the things within companies that people get the most frustrated with. And that's a lot of times why people leave. Yes. And the funny thing is leaders think that they're communicating very well, Mm -hmm. but 
there's clearly a discrepancy between what leaders think they're communicating and what employees are right. receiving for them to say, well, we didn't know about that. We're not informed. Mm -hmm. But then if you ask certain leaders, they say, no, what we told them, did you? Right. Or did you think you told them? And, you know, kind of going back to change. Right. If you were to lay it all out to your employees and say, this is what we're doing, but this is why we are doing it. They are going, I'm guessing, and maybe there's been studies done around this. I don't know that they would be more open to that change. They would be if more, they know why. They would be more open to it. But it's also one of those things that I like to say, get your employees involved. In because making the change or make, coming up with it. Coming up with a solution. Again, I'm not saying bring your employees to the boardroom table. What I'm saying is from the different departments, right? You have your employees on the front line who are the ones most involved with, with mm -hmm. whatever challenge exists or whatever change is going to be made. They're the ones executing it, mm -hmm. right? Get them involved. Get them involved with their own supervisors, their own managers, their own leaders to say, hey, this is what we're thinking. Any ideas? what frustrations or bottlenecks do you foresee exactly. with that? Because that way people are part of the process. Mm -hmm. That is a missing link that tends to happen where it's go, 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 going back to that pawn analogy, like just go here, just go here, just go here. No, have them a part of it right. to say, okay, we want to do change and we want to do this particular change. Here's the solution we're thinking, any concerns. And you'd be surprised, especially when you have product lines mm -hmm. and you have turnaround times, that employees come back and will say, well, what about this? Leadership tends not to think about that because exactly. they're not on the front line. You're very right about that. And because you may be opening them up to their suggestions, mm -hmm. they become more vested. Mm -hmm. Yes. Satis you know, more satisfied. Yes. The key part is, though, that if you're not going to go with their suggested solution, tell them why. Okay. That's a very good point because that's, I think, why leaders sometimes shy away from asking employees because, well, what if I don't like their ideas? Which is fine. But again, it comes back to if you have 10 employees that give suggestions, and I'm not saying if you have a thousand employees in your entire organization, yeah. a thousand are going to give feedback. You probably will have a very small percentage that gives feedback. Mm -hmm. But even if you have 10 that give feedback to their managers and their managers pass it up the line, right? Hopefully it's not a game of Chinese telephone where it changes by the time it gets there. <laughs> well, you know, but, you know but, it has to be in writing. Exactly. But Part of that is, okay, that's a good idea. Here's what else we're thinking out. Maybe we, we you know, table that for mm -hmm. another time. But here's why that wouldn't work. But I like the way you're thinking. I like the thought process. How did you get there? Because you're also simultaneously, a lot of people forget, when you bring these employees in and those that respond and are engaged, that's the start to those that want to build a future with your organization. They could Great be point. your next leaders. You're building them now in the pipeline as to, you're invested, mm -hmm. you care, yeah. right? Two important things. And now you want to see the company succeed. Let's start seeing how we can progress with this to the next stage. Now, not everyone's born to be or desires to be a leader, mm -hmm. but now you can identify those employees that are vested, mm -hmm. that care. And you can capitalize on that in different ways. It doesn't just have to be you're the next manager or supervisor, but there are different ways you can really incorporate them in incorporate them into the business. Right. And using them, you know, I, I've always heard the saying different souls for different roles. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of see those people right. percolate, bubble up to the top right? from all of that if you let them. Absolutely. And the great part about that is, I know we were talking about change, but it also comes back to culture, right? If you have those same 10 employees in this example that are willing to speak up when it comes to change, mm -hmm. those could also be the ones to help you keep a pulse on your culture. Because they're willing to speak up. They're willing to engage. They're willing to give feedback. Very good point. Right? So you really want to mm -hmm. cultivate that. But if you create a culture of not asking for that feedback or not getting that input, well, employers are going to say, well, you don't really care. So why should I say anything? I'm just here to do my job. Right. And then when things start to fall apart, leaders tend to say, uh-oh, what mm -hmm. happened? We're, it's too how, late. How did we get there? We got here a long time ago. Right. Absolutely. Is your closet overflowing or maybe your kids' closets are as well? Or maybe you just want to redecorate your house. If you're wondering what to do with all that stuff that you've accumulated, bring it all to True Fashionistas or even ship it to them for free. They'll sell your unwanted items for you, take away all the hassle by doing all the work, and all you have to do is sit back and collect your money. You can reach out to them online at truefashionistas.com, come into the store, or check them out on Facebook or Instagram, and that's truefashionistas.com. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Welcome back, friends. We are in studio with Tracy Duhaney at the, she's with the Ambicelli Group. Welcome back. Thank you. We are talking about uh, KPIs today. KPIs and how that stems to change and how it ties into cultures with employees. Having a grand old time. We, All the fun things to we talk about. Are, right? So how often should a business go back and look or change maybe their KPIs? Well, KPIs are something you should be monitoring frequently. It's not a case where you say, I'm going to look quarterly or I'm going to look annually. No, that is something, to, especially depending on the KPI, you should be looking at that frequently, but not just as a leader or executive leadership level. Your manager should have an understanding as to the value and why we're measuring whatever it is that we're measuring. So they keep a pulse on it as well. That is extremely important because that's tends to happen just like a business plan. You create it. It goes in the desk drawer. And it's in the drawer. We did it. <laughs> we know what's in there, right. but it just sits there. It's something you should be frequently because at the same time, when you see the results of what you're measuring, when there's variation, and I don't mean slight variation, but mm -hmm. significant variation, that's when we start also asking the questions, wait, what happened here? It's not just a fluke. I hate, I hate treating anything as a fluke. Let's investigate what mm -hmm. happened with this because what we don't want to happen is that we say it's a fluke and then three months later, the fluke is still here. And now right. we're trying to repair what we could have had a proactive approach to. Great point because it's always, we look back in retrospect and go, oh, if only I would have paid attention to yeah. that. Hindsight is twenty twenty, right? It is. It totally <laughs> is. So look at them often. Yes. Look at them a lot so yes. that you can keep your pulse on yes. it and catch some micro change or micro blip that's happening. Well, not catch it, but monitor it because it can be a case where we know that the holidays are here and whatever happens, whatever volatility in the market is happening with the stock exchange, for mm -hmm. example, right? We know that that could be a factor, but as long as we are aware of what the potential reason is, and then monitor it from there. I see. Yes. I see. So what what ultimately do we hope that these KPIs will do for us? Change our business, keep us afloat, um, you know, help us make better business decisions? Yes to all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> all of that. You know, it's interesting because the KPI of keep people informed should also be looked at keep me informed mm -hmm. because as a business leader, your KPIs are there to help you track so you can make better decisions. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is we tend to think, oh, I know it. The reason is this, or I assume this, or this happened because of this, but data doesn't lie. Right? That is- People do. People do. <laughs> data doesn't lie, right? And our intuitions, our emotional mm -hmm. side to this makes us want to believe that something is this way because of X, Y, Z. But when you look at the data, it could be completely opposite. Right. So you use your KPIs to keep you informed so that you can make the best decisions possible. So getting down to the brass taxes of all this is how do we track this? Do we have a spreadsheet? Do we? It, it all depends on the KPI that you're tracking. There are different platforms out there that help you track KPIs. You put in what you want it to track. You put in the sources that they're gathering the data for, and it runs it for you. You could also have an internal team. Usually your managers are involved in this mm -hmm. because, again, they need to be intimately involved. But for small to medium-sized businesses that may not have the ability to invest in these larger software, you keep it internal and you identify if it is a spreadsheet, the thing with spreadsheet, it needs manual entry. It's not mm -hmm. pulling from anywhere. You can bring in your AI tool. I know we don't really like talking about that negative. No, word, but, but no, but let's talk about that when you're done with that. Yeah. So you, thought. for when you have, for however you're choosing or however you're able to based on your resources to track your KPI, if it means a spreadsheet and you have someone manually entering, you know, there's, opportunity for error with that, but it's a start. It's better than nothing. At least you're doing it. At least you're doing it. You know, you have organizations now that can utilize AI and pull in the different platforms that they are part of and analyze the data and spit out, here's your results. I always say verify. Right. Trust, but verify. Right. Trust, but verify. Because <laughs> AI is great, but trust, but verify. Right. Right. And you can use it so that it helps you be more efficient. But if you don't have the ability to do that or you don't understand how to do it, that's fine. You can also seek in a, a consultant because a consultant can come in and help you get it set up, mm -hmm. help train you and your team. Because the important part to remember is it's not just on you. The final decision is maybe on the business owner and the executive team, but your managers have to be involved. Right. They have to understand what they're tracking. They have to understand why and what it means. I think that's the key part. Why and what, what does this mean? Right. And that's the part that 
it's hard for some people to grasp because they think it's just more work. Of course. All of a sudden you want oh. me to now track this. Why am I going to mm-hmm. do this? This is more work. Well, let's come back to the example of customer satisfaction. If we don't know if our customers are satisfied until it's too late and they're starting to go to the surprise competitor next door, right. then our business goes down. And then what happens if we don't have the income coming in? Mm-hmm. We can't survive. And then we have an entire team that may be out of business. Now that's a dire example, but Really and truly, that's part of the, what are our customers saying? Because we can't know if we're satisfying our customers or meeting their needs if we don't listen to what they're saying. Very true. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, going, I just thinking out loud here, um, you know, tracking your customer satisfaction, you know, something, I'm just taking that as an example. You can do a survey, Right. right? You can track all that with your survey. But the other part of that is, is somebody needs to act on those results. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the also That's the crux the of it. Like you have to take the data and do something with it. You mm-hmm. can't just sit in, in your a, desk drawer. Like, or in a <laughs> saved computer. file on the computer right. and say, Well, we did it. Well, what does it say? Right. Oh, I don't know. I'm scared. I don't want to look at it. Look. <laughs> and that is the biggest right. problem because if you believe subjectively that you are satisfying your customers, the data should follow. Mm-hmm. But if you're scared to look at that, there is a disconnect. And it's almost the fear of knowing. Because when you know, you either have to correct it. And if you don't, that's really on you. That's ownership and accountability. Versus if you don't know, you can always make yourself believe. Ah, right. It's, it's not. It's a mind It's thing. great. The customers are satisfied. It's great. It's economy. It's they're not spending as much. They're not doing this. That's why they're not coming back. It could be something so simple as, yeah. well, the hospitality has gone down mm-hmm. when I walk in the door. Right. Something so easy to fix. But because we're f- afraid of the res- mm-hmm. the answer, we tend to overlook it. Then it becomes this big problem. Right. And now we're trying to scramble and pull our hair out saying, what do we do? We can't dig our heads in the sand. Yes. We need to unearth whatever it is. We have to be ready for the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fun conversation. I know. (laughs) You know, I I, I love to keep people informed. I'm just stuck on that because that's not how we traditionally think of KPIs. It's not. And I, again, I wish I could take credit for it. I don't even know who at this point can take credit for it, but it is definitely a popular term that has evolved in 2023 and probably before, but Mm -hmm. it just gained traction now. And it's the pure truth of keep people and yourself inform, informed. Mm-hmm. I love it. Tracy, if our listeners would like to get a hold of you, how can they do so? Well, they can start by visiting my website, www.theambicellegroup.com. They can send me an email at Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, at theambicellegroup.com. Or you can give us a call at 239-682-1282. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, friends, for joining me today and every week here on The Confident Entrepreneur brought to you by True Fashionistas. If you want a deeper dive or you'd like to check out my online courses for your small business, head to jenniferannjohnson.com. Have a fabulous day.